Thank you for clicking through to my number 7 on metering diaphragm issues and bogging down. I have uploaded the full version, the full 12 reasons in a crash course, so please do check that out if you'd like to, but I've listed them separate to make things simpler. So if all was ok now with my fuel vanes and all the previous key steps, the next thing I'd look at is my metering diaphragm. Now the metering diaphragm, shown here in green, is responsible for regulating the correct amount of fuel coming into the inlet area of the carburettor. And when fuel is used out of the fuel reservoir beneath it, it draws the diaphragm down, as you can see there. And when it draws the diaphragm down, it allows more fuel to come through into that reservoir area. And the reason it can flow through freely now is because that needle valve is now off its seat, because the metering diaphragm has pressed down on the lever, allowing it to be lifted off. So this drawing in of fuel occurs when the piston's on the upstroke because when the piston's on the upstroke on a two-stroke engine it draws in the fuel air mixture behind it. I won't go into that too much here because I do have another video already on how a carburetor and an engine work together on a two-stroke so please do take a look at that if you need to but for this video I just wanted to explain what happens there briefly and when the piston comes back down this is what we see there's no fuel being drawn in at the moment. So we've got the piston up, piston down, piston up, piston down, piston up and down etc. So let's look into the diaphragm then. There we've got the diaphragm in green and we've got beneath it in brown the gasket and that's just to keep everything sealed up there. Now on this illustration I won't show the gasket going right across when the diaphragm's down like this because the diaphragm is on the edges, I've shown it there on the edges and I'll just show it like that just so that we can see things a little better. Because if I showed it this way with it going right across it would just look a little more crowded and I just wanted to keep it as plain as possible. But just to illustrate this is what these gaskets normally look like and they're designed as such that they span around the outside of the diaphragm allowing the diaphragm to come down in the middle so they've got a hole in the middle there to allow that. So my point is as well that the diaphragm always sits on top of the gasket. So there we go everything present all working well we've got the gasket and the diaphragm there and at the moment the piston is on the upstroke drawing in fuel. Now we know how it works let's have a look at some problems that can occur. Firstly let's just consider here this gasket and how it keeps a seal in the metering area. Now providing this lid is nice and tight then that gasket and the diaphragm can form a good seal in this area. Now one issue I've come across in the past are these screws. Now sometimes these can be slightly loose and only slightly enough that you can't actually see them loose with the naked eye and yet it's enough to cause problems. Because what can happen it can just remove the top slightly to break that seal, that vital seal that we need. And although I've shown an obvious gap here, the gap can be so small that it'll draw in air and we won't even see that there's a gap there at all. So for illustration purposes I've just shown there the gaps between and we don't want that at this stage. Now what you'll probably notice if the cap is loose and there's a gap there that you'll see fuel spilling out. But at the same time there'll be air being drawn into the carburettor so we won't just be losing fuel we'll be gaining air where we shouldn't be and so as things progress we'll be having that air being drawn in there at the metering area all the time as well as losing the fuel and so what's going to happen there is that we're going to have less fuel and more air so you can see there we've got fuel and we've got air above it so we're getting less of a fuel line there the tide line of fuels going down and down all the time and we'll also undoubtedly have air mixed in with what fuel we've got up there. Now because we're drawing in air in these places that we shouldn't be, we've actually lost the vacuum there in the metering area. And it's the vacuum that we need in order for the metering diaphragm to be drawn down. But because we've lost the vacuum, it will no longer be drawn down and act on the metering lever, which will then act on the metering needle to allow more fuel through. So we've lost the fuel through altogether there. So all that will happen now is the metering needle will stay fast on its seat and because that's fast on its seat it won't allow any fuel coming upward from the fuel pump diaphragm area to replenish what's up there in the metering area. So all that's left is this fuel here that's mixed with air with no backup whatsoever. So all that can be supplied to the engine through the jets is this erroneous mix of air and fuel and that of course isn't sufficient to run an engine so 
will have bogged down. If you do suspect this is happening, then the remedy is quite simple, providing the gasket and the diaphragm are okay. Just make sure these screws are nice and tight. Not too tight, as that we can strain the threads, but nice and tight. You'll soon know if it's a problem up here, because you'll see fuel leaking down. So you can always try tightening these screws. Another problem, however, we can be faced with is problems with the diaphragm itself. This diaphragm is made from special material to allow it to be nice and free and flexible, to move up and down nice and freely, covering a good distance there. And it needs to cover enough distance so that this part of the diaphragm here, the dowel area, lowers down enough to push down here on the back of this lever, the metering lever. And when it does, we get this. The lever's pressed at the back and it's tilted up at the front and the metering needle's lifted off its seat. Of course, then we get fuel flowing here because we've got the needle off its seat, as we can see, and fuel can freely enter the metering area at the top. And as we know, when the diaphragm comes back up, it removes itself from the back of the lever, and because it's got a spring at the back there on the lever, it pushes the needle down. So now we've got a nice tight seat and no fuel coming through, which at the moment is just what we want. So let's just observe it again, working under normal working conditions. It's moving nice and freely, and it's operating at a good distance, making sure that that valve's opening. Each time the gasket lowers, which of course, as we've mentioned, ensures that there's plenty fuel supply here for the main jets in order to put the fuel into the inlet. Now sometimes these diaphragms can become more rigid, and that can be due to age, or it can be due to an inferior product, if you like, an inferior material that the diaphragm's made from. And the problem with it being more rigid is that the diaphragm can no longer have the same range of motion. As you can see there, it's moving up and down nicely, but it's not moving up and down as far as it did. So it's not acting on the back of this lever and pushing down as far as it did. And in that case now, we're not opening the valve as much as we did. So that's now obviously going to have implications here. There's not going to be the same amount of fuel available in the inlet. That's simply because we won't have the same amount of flow of fuel coming past the needle there because it's only partially open. So there's going to be less up here in the metering area, which will lead to less being available to be given by the main jet. And finally, as we've mentioned, will lead to less being available here in the inlet for the engine. Let's just take a look for a moment how this would look. So let's have a look in the middle there, in the inlet. You can see with every cycle of the piston, there's less fuel coming in. So there's less available each time the piston needs to combust. And of course, eventually, there's just going to be that little that they'll be bogged down. That's if the engine runs to this point at all. Just to recap, this is a healthy diaphragm, so everything's well. And this is again one that's gone rigid, so this is the unhealthy diaphragm. There's big differences there. So, should you suspect that the metering diaphragm is at fault, they're easy enough to find on the internet and they're quite cheap. I normally buy them in a kit, so I get the full diaphragm kit for the whole carburetor and I change everything while I'm at it. And that way, I know everything's okay. Another metering diaphragm issue I've had in the past is damage or punctures in the diaphragm. Although the diaphragm itself's okay and it's not rigid, it's nice and free, having punctures in the diaphragm can cause dramatic effects. Because when the diaphragm comes down, you can see there that the fuel leaks back through that little hole and goes the other side of the diaphragm. So when the diaphragm comes back up, it doesn't come back up fully. So now we've got fuel on this side of the diaphragm where it shouldn't be. And normally on the metering diaphragm cap, there's a little air hole. And the purpose of this little air hole is to act as a breather which allows air in and out behind the diaphragm as it moves up and down, so we don't get any pressure building up of air behind the diaphragm. So there won't be a vacuum behind the diaphragm stopping it from coming down, and there won't be pressure behind the diaphragm stopping it coming back up. This air hole allows the through road, if you like, and free diaphragm movement. One thing I want to mention before I go any further, though, is just to be aware that that breather hole should be open at all times. So just make sure that it's not blocked, because if there is a blockage there, as I've just mentioned, it can create a vacuum 
for that diaphragm and stop its range of movement and we've just seen what can happen then. Now just going back to the diaphragm damage again, as we mentioned before we've got the fuel there up above the top of the diaphragm where it shouldn't be and that's going to create problems but the one thing we will see is we'll see leakage of this fuel through that breather hole there and of course the more that the machine is used the more fuel we're going to see coming out of this breather hole. So this is a good indication if you've got diaphragm damage but because we've got the hole there we've lost the vacuum and because we've lost the vacuum this diaphragm won't come down low enough to open that valve as we saw earlier when the diaphragm was stiff we've got the same problem now of the diaphragm not traveling down enough to open the needle valve in a similar way and that's all because it's lost its ability to be drawn down by way of vacuum so the results going to be the same as the last issue there's going to be less through road of fuel coming through so there'll be less available for the main jet to put out into the inlet for the engine. So if you could see into the carb this is what you'd probably see something like this. You can see there's less fuel, less fuel every time the piston cycles and then eventually bog down. The remedy for this by the way is the same. It's a case of just replacing the metering diaphragm and as I've said you can get them quite reasonable off the internet. Now another problem that can occur, and certainly one I've had in the past with these metering diaphragms, is with this area here. This is the plunger that's part of the diaphragm or the dowel that activates this area here on the metering lever. And this is a tricky one because the rest of the diaphragm can be identical to the correct one, but the plunger itself can be too short sometimes. And that can affect the correct space in there between the plunger and the back of the metering lever. And you can get diaphragms that look the same, but this plunger here is slightly shorter or longer. And that can produce dramatic effects to the running of the engine. So let's take these two diaphragms for example. Now they both look identical from the outset. They're exactly the same size, the same thickness, and they have the same holes as each other. And if you were to take a ruler and measure, you'd get the same size across in any direction as each other. And so to the untrained eye, you'd think they were identical and you'd fit either to your machine. But there is a difference and to see it you've got to look a lot closer and it's this area here. This is that plunger I was telling you about. It's far different to the one on this side because the one on the left hand side is longer than the one on the right hand side there. There it is again on the drawing and remember how vital it has to be for that spacing. So we could have dramatic effects depending on which diaphragm we fit whether it's the long one there or the short one across here. And it's vital we choose the right one. And let's just briefly go over why and that's because when the engine's running and the diaphragms come down to allow fuel to come out we need that plunger to travel down just enough in order to push down on the back of that metering lever just enough so that it tilts that lever up just enough in order to open up that needle valve at the front there just enough for the correct flow of fuel to go in to the top there in the metering area which in turn then allows the fuel to be available there in the inlet for the engine to use. So that was under normal working conditions, but let's have a look at the other scenario then, if we've got a plunger that's too short. Okay, now we've got the shorter plunger, and immediately you can see there there's more space between the plunger and the back of that metering lever. And now when everything's working and the diaphragm comes down, it does so just as quickly and efficiently, and it travels the same distance, but although it travels the same distance, it doesn't push back down as much on the back of that metering lever. And that means the front here under the needle valve isn't open quite as much, allowing as much flow through. So although this diaphragm is stretched down as far as the correct diaphragm would be, because that plunger is shorter, it's not pushing as far down on the back of the metering lever. This is a diaphragm with the correct plunger. You can see there the plunger's longer and there's more flow through allowed there through that spacing under the needle. So there'll be enough fuel supply there for the engine. Comparing that scenario again there with the shorter plunger, we can see a big difference there. There'll be less fuel available. And recalling my past experiences, I have actually had a carburetor in the past where I've mistakenly fitted the wrong diaphragm. And whilst I could get the engine to idle or even run on low speed, as soon as I pulled the trigger for high speeds, high revs, it bogged down. And it took me a while to work out the problem, but eventually I did. And I replaced the diaphragm and I was away.
and I came to the conclusion this is what was happening. If you can see there, on each cycle of the piston, up and down, each time it needs fuel, it gets less and less. Particularly when you open the throttle out, we haven't actually got enough fuel there to support high revs because we haven't got the clearance there under the needle valve to allow much fuel through and of course then bogged down. And it's quite difficult to believe it's all down to that plunger not being the right length. And unfortunately it's something that's often overlooked. But that's no longer the case now. So if you are going to strip down your carburettor and replace all your diaphragms just make sure that this diaphragm is identical in every way to the one you're taking off because that's where the mistakes generally lie. It's when we replace the diaphragm because generally the correct diaphragm is normally on the carburettor to begin with and as I say it's when we replace the diaphragm where we make mistakes. And thank you so much for watching this video. Please do check out my next video number 8 of 12 where I address problems with the metering lever and bogging down. Thank you for watching.